Welcome to the Skip and Shannon Undisputed Podcast. I'm Joy Taylor. You can catch us Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on FS1. Here's what this podcast is all about. It's an unscripted, unfiltered, undisputed version of the day's show, and there is a lot to get into in today's podcast. Just a quick note, you guys, I lost my voice over the weekend. I'm a bit under the weather, so I apologize that I am sounding like I have a frog in my throat, but we're going to get through this all together. Ezekiel Elliott News opened the show today as Shannon offers some real-world advice for the young running back that might be headed down the wrong path. Fox Sports NFL analyst Greg Jennings stops by to tell you why Skip's Cowboys have taken a step back. As you might imagine, Skip has a rebuttal. Rap legend and New York's own Jadakiss sits down at the desk to talk about his New York Giants big wide receiver edition. Is Steph Curry backing James Harden for the NBA MVP? We talked to our hoops expert Chris Broussard to explain the reigning MVP's endorsement. Plus, our college football expert Joel Klatt is here to break down his top 50 NFL prospects in the upcoming draft and gives us a lesson in real estate. Skip and Shannon, good to see you guys. I apologize for Shannon's behavior yesterday because he was highly complimentary of Jenny Taft, who attempted to replace you for one day, and you know what happened? He was... Skip, you up here dry snitching? Yeah. yeah. You know I what am. dry snitching is? I'm not dry. I'm, I'm public snitching. I'm yeah, sure but I'm not. saying it's unprompted. That's oh. what dry snitching oh, is. Okay. She didn't ask you how was Shannon oh, yesterday. I, I just wanted to apologize. <laughs> I'm sure that Jenny did okay. it's okay. a wonderful it's job. Okay. Uh, Jenny is great. She I appreciate her fine. being there so that I could uh, support my brother in Miami. So I appreciate way that. Thank you Good for job. letting me do that, by the way, also. Joy, you sound just fine. I don't know about that, but I appreciate you saying that. Let's get started with some NFL off the field news. TMZ released a video yesterday of Ezekiel Elliott pulling down a woman's shirt at a St. Patrick's Day party on Saturday in Dallas. Another video surfaced later showing the woman slapping Elliot's hand away as he attempted to pull down her shirt. He is reportedly not facing criminal charges for the incident, but can be suspended by the NFL. Elliot is already under NFL investigation on whether he violated the league's personal conduct policy for allegedly assaulting a woman last year. Shannon, what's your reaction? Skip, skip, skip. Watching the video. Now, when you, I first saw the video, I just saw the first part. I saw him expose the lady breast. And then TMZ later came along and showed the second part. The first part showed me, looks to me, that she is surprised because immediately, as soon as she feels it happens, she covers herself. Now, he goes in to do it again, and she knocks his hands out of the way. No woman, no female should ever be subjected to this type of behavior, regardless of the setting, regardless of the environment, regardless if you've been drinking or not. Now, I'm, I'm guessing this is a St. Patrick's Day parade. We know what normally happens during St. Patrick's Day. That's one of the occasions that a lot of people, you know, like to drink. I'm not going to excuse Ezekiel's behavior. Later, she exposes her own breast. Basically, she's telling Ezekiel Elliott, you don't get to determine whether or not I show my breath, breast. This is my body. I get to determine that. And if I want to do it, although I might not agree with it, that's her choice. Well within her right. Skip, I've said this for months. Wherever this young man is, be it the Cowboys or any of the other 31 teams, the head coach and the general manager will never, ever be able to put their phone on silent as long as he's on their roster. Because there's always the potential, the possibility or probability that you're going to get a phone call. You hope it's nothing serious, but somehow, some way, things, trouble, incidences seems to follow this young man around. And we've seen it over and over. What Zeke doesn't understand, his dad left St. Louis, moved to Columbus, Ohio, because he says, my son is naive. My son does not understand who and what he is. He's a superstar now. Mm. Now, the quote was, my son doesn't know how to navigate navigate. life as a superstar. Go ahead. Now, this was going to Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Magnify that by three, four times. He was an all-pro running back. He was on the, had the best record in the NFL. So now what happened at Ohio State, it gets magnified because you're you're in the National Football League Mm -hmm. and you're a Dallas Cowboy. Skip, he has to act differently. He's not normal. Because guess what, Skip? Do I believe that Ezekiel Elliott, and I'm not excusing what he, do I believe he's the only one male that probably exposed the female's breast? No. But he's the only one named Ezekiel Elliott. 
And there, and therein lies the rub, what he doesn't understand. My grandfather used to tell my brother and I, boy, short-term actions have long-term and lasting consequences. Skip, let's just say for the sake of argument, and I'm trying to, I'm going to be devil advocate just for a second. She sees that video. That's Ezekiel Elliott. He got $24 million guaranteed. Let me get me a lawyer and see what they say. What if one, a lawyer comes to her? What if her girlfriends, what if her parents sees that? Now what? See, you, uh, you subjected yourself for something you shouldn't have. You shouldn't even put yourself in that situation. And I tell guys this all the time. Alcohol does not change your morals. It changes your conscience. See, alcohol will not allow you to do anything drunk you didn't at least think about sober. It breaks down your inhibitions. It breaks down your reluctancy. It breaks down your fears. Got a little alcohol. Got a little that liquid courage in me, Skip. I can do this now. Hey, we, we drank it. Everybody having us a good time. And that's what alcohol does. It doesn't change morals. It changes your conscience. Skip, this is what I don't get about this young man. He still have a pending investigation mm -hmm. into a domestic allegation about him and his ex-girlfriend. We also had an incident about a month ago, Skip, about he, he was, he said he was just talking. The report came out that a friend of his was trying to get into a club with a firearm. This is the way I look at it, Skip. If I want to go party and the only way I'm going to feel safe, I need to have a firearm on me or one of my buddies, I don't need to be there. But let me tell you something about this buddy. You need to get rid of him. Because let me tell you how my buddies did me when I was in the NFL and I would go home. Skip, I would go places, and I was like, okay, I'm about to head back to my grandmother's house. Who needs a ride back downtown? They say, Sharp, we ain't going to even put you in that situation. You made it out. We want to make sure you stay making it out. He says, you know what I, they, you know what I do. If, we were to get, if you were to get stopped, even though it's on me, I'm not the headline. They already know I'm dirty. You're it. We can't put you in harm's way. That's what homeboys do. That's what buddies do that care about you and your well-being. He doesn't get it, Skip. And I'm afraid that I hope nothing serious happens to him before he gets the message because he's getting warnings, but he's not adhering to them. And we blew this off in Seattle, Skip. Oh, he was just being adventurous, wandered into a shop. He's just being adventurous. He didn't know what that was, Skip. There's too many red flags. I'm starting to believe this is not being young and naive. This is being who he is. Unfortunately, I've been saying this is who he is for about the last, how long have we been on? <laughs> September, September the 6th. 6th. Yeah. This was obviously just so, so bad and so, so wrong. And I was not surprised because it's always something with Ezekiel Elliott. Or something he's else always, with Ezekiel. Yeah, he's always on the edge of trouble, if not in trouble. And you said it seems like trouble follows him. No, he, he seeks it. <laughs> Un unwittingly, maybe, but he just seeks it because he constantly puts himself in harm's way. Wrong place, wrong time, wrong situation. And you're right. I tweeted this yesterday. Obviously, he just doesn't get it, and I'm not sure he will until it's too late because he's only going to get it, I fear, and I'm speaking also as a fan and as just as a fan of his as a, as a human, I'm afraid it's going to be too late that he learns his lesson because he gets so punished he has to learn his lesson. Right. And it may cost him part or all of his career before this is over because it has been one thing after another after another to the point that I'm going to ask Jerry Jones publicly, maybe you should do what you did for Pac-Man Jones back in the day or for Des Bryant, and that's to hire a babysitter, 24-hour security, to hang with him. That's like Des had 20, I don't know if he still has it now, but for a while, while Des was having his issues off the field, 24-hour security detail. Pac-Man had one in his days with the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't really work. He, he still got into problems. But in this case, we knew going in that Ezekiel likes to party. He likes to get out among them. He likes people. He likes to have his fun. What I don't know for sure, does he have problems with alcohol, as you point up, handling his alcohol? Does he have problems with domestic violence? 
We have our suspicions because the same woman accused him twice in Columbus, Ohio, and then down in South Florida. And in each case, the authorities dropped the charges on, quote unquote, insufficient evidence. Mm -hmm. Jerry Jones has repeatedly said, almost defiantly said publicly to reporters, there is no case in either case. Even though the NFL continues to say, nope, our investigation is ongoing. So obviously that means it's still possible the NFL could suspend Ezekiel Elliott yeah. because the, the NFL doesn't need legal charges to suspend. Yeah, the NFL said it was open and mm-hmm. ongoing. ongoing. They haven't closed it. No, no. Yet, with this investigation ongoing, let's think about this. Ezekiel winds up on a rooftop, which is a bar, mm-hmm. during a St. Patrick's Day parade in which he is looking over the edge down into the crowd, playing to the crowd. She's playing to the crowd, and we know what happens next, mm-hmm. as you detailed. And it's just so bad because it's it's the, the, the behavior is just inexcusable, given what's hanging over his head ongoing. And a public figure a public in a figure. public setting it's would just, do something like this. Right. It comes across to me like he's daring the NFL to suspend him. It comes across like he's continuing to dare the devil in every situation he throws himself into. It's time and time again that I have to sit back and ask myself, what were you thinking? Well, he wasn't, correct? No. He just doesn't think. And he's not afraid yet to have to stop and think before he acts and puts himself in these situations. I was told by people I know very well in Dallas, there was another mid-season incident in a bar, an altercation involving one Ezekiel Elliott, but no charges got filed, so it came and it went quietly. But in this case, even though my Cowboys, they, they have a long history back to the 1960s of law-breaking and hell-raising back to dandy Don Meredith. Read my book, God's Coach. It's just rife with incident (laughs) after incident after incident. But guess what? Now we have this thing called the internet, and now almost every fan in his or her hands has a video camera called a cell phone. So, Zeke, you'll get away with next to nothing because you can't go into any public setting and do what you continue to to attempt to do. It's not going to fly because the National Football League, more than ever, as you know all too well, is more and more protective of the shield, of its billion-dollar image. And it's going to more quickly punish players who somehow defile that image, who who embarrass the NFL and and its sponsors. Especially openly and publicly. Mm -hmm. Because remember, it, it took the video of Ray Rice. It did. And so now, we, see, if this, if this young lady has came out and said he did this, it's, it's hey, it's St. Patrick's Day, he's drunk, she's drunk. It's his word against her words. But Skip, that camera, as you mentioned, you know what the camera has done? It's turned everybody into a TV person and a journalist. Because I get the free... It's there, Skip. I don't have to do any talking. Yeah. It's a silent movie. You see what you see. But let's just say for the sake of argument, Skip, let's just take this. The lady says, hey, I was, I was, I'm not going to file charges. Let's just say in a year, two, four years from now, a female said, Ezekiel Elliott touched me inappropriate. Who you believe in? That's on his resume. That ain't going anywhere. Oh, no, I'm to the point. I don't believe anything he says. This, uh, he's been in one thing after another. Zeke, Remember his little visit to, well, on, and, before their game in Seattle? Seattle. Skip, he just wandered in. He thought it was a candy store. It was. They had brownies up in there. Mm-hmm. But that, that, that's neither here nor there. Skip, he needs to understand parties and good times can take place without him being involved. See, he's one of these guys, ain't in a party unless I'm in it. Ain't in a party. Hey, it ain't no fun if I can't have none. And he feels he needs to be in the center of it. Mm-hmm. Zeke, you're not normal. John Kicklider could have done that because nobody knows who he is. You're Ezekiel Elliott, running back on the most visible franchise in the NFL. The star is on your helmet. You are a very, very good player. You're held to a different standard than normal 21-year-olds that do not play a professional sport. Mm -hmm. So some things you can get away with. But see, you know what's going to happen, Skip? You know, there's a a voice recording of our president now of something that he said. 
He said, you can grab women inappropriately and do certain things if you're powerful and they'll let you get away with it. Now, there's a lot of people that sees that and say, see, Donald Trump said that. that excuse me, I take that back. President Trump said that. And that's what they think. They think athletes, they think people that's famous, people that have money can get away with things. And to a certain extent, through history, and it, it, it's been proven. The more wealthy you are, the more well-known you are, justice is like cobwebs and shackles. If you're indigent, if you're a minority, it's like shackles, you're held more accountable. But if you're wealthy and you're not the a non-minority, it's like cobwebs, you brush it aside. Hmm. Ezekiel? Take it from a guy that played 14 years. You better change your behavior. You better change your ways. This isn't going to end well on the path you're currently on. Mm. This isn't going to end well for you, your family, or the Cowboys. Now, you keep getting these little, little warning signs, Skip, little warning. But I'm afraid like you, it's the big one. And then we're going to say, well, why didn't we see this coming? Oh, we foretold of this. He just re refused to listen. Tell Ezekiel, I'm, a, I'm talking to you like a father because I have a son that's a little older than you. I will never tell you what you want to hear, but I'll always tell you what you need to know. And what you need to know now, your behavior is unacceptable. Your actions are unacceptable. And you're heading down a path that you don't want to head down. Now, this is on your resume. Now, how high up it continuously move is going to be up to you. But Zeke, you better change the way you do business or this isn't going to end well. You're not the first great player to come into the National Football League. You won't be the last. There have been a lot of stories told of guys that had excellent opportunities. That's correct. And blew them, squandered them yeah. because they couldn't control their behavior off the field. Yeah. Let that be a cautionary tale to you. Ms. It is. Kelly. It's becoming the Johnny Manziel question. What's more important, your NFL career or partying, clubbing, whatevering? And for Johnny, for the longest time, he's like, you know what? This is more important right. over here. Okay. I don't. It's fine. I'm not using alcohol. I'm not using his age. The, no female should ever be subjected to this. I don't care the environment. I don't care if it's St. Patrick's Day for a whole month. What he did is inappropriate. Zeke changed it. Hopefully his father or someone that he trusts, loves, and cares about can get to him and say, Zeke, you need to change. Because I don't know how many people are listening to him, Skip. I don't know how many people are around him telling him what he needs to know as opposed to what he wants to hear. Zeke, you had a great year, man. Hey, you the best running back in football. You on the Cowboys. You the man. Okay. I'm going to tell you what that's going to get you. And you don't want what that's going to get you. Mm. Joy. Well, this Your isn't thoughts. about fun, having fun or partying or anything like that. It's about character. There's plenty of people that go and enjoy St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day parades and parties with their families and friends and don't behave like this because this behavior is entitled. Like you said, it's not surprising. We've already seen it. And we hear this. Most powerful person in the country said that you can do what you want with women when you're a star. It's validated. Yeah. He's, he has, he's behaving entitled and... Um, it's pretty simple. Just keep your hands to yourself. It's, it's really just the bottom line. Skip, it's not complicated. That's why I stopped. Skip, I stopped going to bars. You know why? Because I used to go with my friends because I didn't drink. It's people drinking. And when people are drinking, their inhibitions are lowered. They'll say, they'll do a lot of things they wouldn't normally do. For me, why am I going to go and put myself in that situation? Ezekiel obviously needs to not be in those situations. No! But that doesn't excuse it. Even if you are there, that doesn't mean that you're all of a sudden going to behave that way. This is about Ezekiel's character. Oh, yeah. And not about the environment Absolutely. that he's in. And as of right now, the NFL has not made a comment on the video. So we'll Something's keep, coming keep an down. eye on Something's that. Something's coming down the pipeline with Now, Ezekiel. I'm not going to be surprised if he gets suspended. No mercy. Welcome back. We're joined by a friend of the show, hip-hop star Jadakus. Welcome to Undisputed. Thanks for having me. Good to have you back. So, Jada, we know you're a huge Giants fan, and they signed wide receiver Brandon Marshall to a two-year deal last week. Eli Manning got another big target to pair him up with Odell Beckham Jr. How much better are your Giants now? I think the Giants are a little bit better. I mean... Just um, a little? Mm. I mean, Brandon is a, a, a exceptional receiver, but, you know, it's a, it's a team sport. You got to make sure the D is right. And then you got to see where 
Eli, sometimes you don't know what you're gonna get with Eli. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think he he might he might show us a tad bit of life with Brandon on the other side with Odell now. But we gotta see. Hmm. What so, you, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, no, skip, go ahead. You go. So does this mean you think you are better than my Dallas Cowboys after adding Brandon? Nah, I wouldn't say that, but you know, the Giants always play your Dallas Cowboys good. Well, I beat them you know twice. I mean? This yeah. might just make it a, a hell of a game now, but I, I ain't too sure. Yeah. You know what I mean, I so, got to see. I got to do the eye test. Do, do I hear you being more sold than most Giant fans on Dak and Zeke in Dallas? No, nah, I, I still will give y'all the edge. Dak and Zeke is, they're the, they're, they're the future right now. You know I, mean? no, I think they're the present right now. The if, present. in fact, Zeke is still eligible next year, that's a whole other issue. Y'all head yeah. cracked him last year, Jada. Yeah. I mean, I mean, y'all head cracked him last year without Brandon Marshall. <laughs> head Marcus. cracked him 20 to 19 and on <laughs> some fluke pass. Talking, you had your yeah, chance. head cracked You had your chance well, to well, talk you gotta, to Jada. You got to be Jada, y'all truthful. y'all head busted last year. Your defense come back. You know what Janoris Jenkins do to dance. Put him in them handcuffs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only thing I don't like is... They always play, Giants always play Dallas good. You want them to play some other yeah, teams? Yeah, I, <laughs> I need them to play the whole schedule like that. Mm. I know you, you've you heard Andre Iguodala comments. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the comments and was he out of line? I would say he was out of line. Um, you know, we, we, we're professional athletes and artists, so you, you got to handle, it's a different mannerism you have to conduct yourself with. We all get angry. We all get pushed to the limit. We all feel like, you know, bursting out. But unfortunately, due to the nature of your professionalism and your job, it's a way to handle it. I think he just, that night he just said, I don't care. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'll take the fine. I'll take the repercussions. That's just how he was feeling. I think it was not, you know, not appropriate for the moment. Over the last couple of years, the use of the N word, mm-hmm. especially in rap and hip hop lyrics, do you think the hip hop rap community, I don't know how, how to answer this, bear some responsibility, maybe tone it down, take it out, not use it? Where, where are you on the N word? Um, it's, a, it's like, a, it's like a, a double edged sword for me because, you know, it's, it's used a lot. I use it. In some of my songs or some of my raps, I try not to use it in in a con- basic conversation. You right. know what I mean? But um, it's like a double-edged sword. I think the rap the rap culture could help it out a little bit, but it, it's still gonna still gonna get used casually in personal conversations, and that's just before our before our time, before right. your time, before my time, and. Mm. You know what I mean? It's just something you gotta, we gotta try to figure out, you know, make a marriage with using it. But I definitely think the hip hop culture, we use it more frequently than any other culture. I, I would, mm. I definitely would agree to that. And we may be able to help. I'm not sure, but we may, it may, mm. if it starts with rap, it might, you might can dumb it down a little. So Jada, I've said many times on television, that N-word ending in the hard E-R used historically mm. by white people against black people is the most evil word in the English language, and I wish it could be somehow eradicated. Mm-hmm. But as Michael Eric Dyson has told us, as, as a spokesman for the black community, man, we both know very well, mm-hmm. that in his view, black people took that word, hijacked that word, drained some of the poison, if not all the poison out of it, and turned it into a term of at least familiarity, in some cases, endearment. affection Fiction. or endearment. Mm-hmm. How do you view that word ending in A that is used in many rap lyrics? What does it mean to you and to your brothers? How do, how do you use it and when you use it, what does it say? I think that was a good point you made. I think when, when it's ending in the, when it ends with the A opposed to the ER, the A is, it's showing the connection. When it ends with the A, is like, it's some kind of connection there. And you're my it, partner. Yeah, you're my, my partner. Is a, okay. Yeah, you're reaching out for, it's a bondage there when it ends with the A, I would say. When it ends with the ER, it's malice. It's being used with malice. No it's doubt. being used with disrespect. It's being, 
you know, is is belittling you, is is doing all the things that shouldn't be done. So that's why I say it's a hard. It all it sometimes is the tone, the way the expression, the way it comes out, the way mm -hmm. you're using it. So it's a it's a tricky one. Do, and I know you run into this. You're in the hip hop community, and as you said, you use this word in your song sometimes. But you hear people that's not from this community say, well, he said it in the song, or he said it to each other. Why can't we say it? You don't ask a man, why can't you call his wife baby? baby. He calls a, he calls a baby. Why can't I? Because that's not your wife. Yeah. That's not your connection. I'm with you. So if we stop yeah. trying to say, well, you do it, why can't? Stop looking for a reason to try to say that word. Because more times than not, if you say that word, something bad is going to follow up behind it. And this is where I am on this. If we took the end, and I'm with you, Skip. If we could take the ER, take it out of the dictionary, if we refrain from saying the A at the end, uh -huh. what does that change in black America? Are we going to get more access to health care? Are we going to get more ha access to employment, to schooling? I doubt it. So it changes think, absolutely nothing. It don't change nothing. So that's just another cop out that says, okay, you saying it, why can't I say it? In, in actuality, you don't really want to address the issues. That's just a meaningless issue from a, uh, uh, let's just talk about that so we don't really have to talk about the real issues. Definitely. It's a diversion, you know. <laughs> you point one finger, three gets pointing back at you. Mm -hmm. Who you we just had uh, Chris Broussard on here about the MVP discussion. Skip's a big, he, he Hold loves... Hold let me go one other direction okay, before we go back to basketball on, on this. Obviously, white kids buy a lot of rap. Mm -hmm. And yet, are you okay if white kids start using that word to each other or even to black friends of theirs or that they use your, you know, they sing or repeat your, your lyrics? How do you feel about that? What line gets drawn there? Um, I would say if a, a young white kid is listening to a, a CD or a body of work from an artist and and he's really passionate about the artist, it's hard to tell him to sing the whole verse but leave that <laughs> yeah that part yeah, out. Yeah, leave right. that part out. Okay. You know what I mean? It's, it, it it goes off the individual. You can't you can't weigh it as the as the whole world is it's the it's the individual. We me as JD Kiss and the Locks, we grew up with a lot of white friends. We have a lot of Arab friends um, and people of different, you know, ethnic backgrounds. Yeah, backgrounds. So we hear it from other people besides, you know, colored dudes, and it, it doesn't affect us the same because they grew up with us. Okay. You know what I mean? So it goes off. But if you just hear a random white kid use that to another white kid, maybe. That, that would look kind of crazy to me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But you know what? Let's, let's stay on this topic. See, a lot of people want to make it seem like we're the only race of people or the only demographic of people that have a negative that's a, that has a negative word that use it amongst ourselves which means friends. Mm -hmm. Joy might call some of her girlfriends the B word. Mm -hmm. They don't get mad, but another man can't say that to a woman. Mm -hmm. You see I got, I know gay guys that will call them call the other gay guy a negative name. Mm -hmm. They don't get mad with each other. But some reason, well, I don't go around saying well if she called Joy that, why can't I? Okay. If he called him that, why can't I? I just assume that they know each other like that, they're comfortable with each other yep. like that, so they can address each other like that. I don't ask why and why not. I'm just, it's cool. He cool with it, I'm cool with it. <laughs> but for some reason, we, in our community, if we say, well, you said it to him, they rap about it, why can't I? Stop looking for a reason to say the word. I mean, if you want to get lumped up, you go, go ahead and say it. I agree. I agree. If you want to get in, you know. Just you, do yourself a favor and yeah. don't say it. Exactly. It's pretty simple. Silence <laughs> is golden. There. Yeah, there the you best go. way is not to use it. <laughs> no mercy. Reigning two-time NBA MVP Steph Curry told the Dan Patrick Show yesterday that he thinks James Harden will edge out Russell Westbrook for the MVP award. Curry said, quote, you have to award the better team. We're joined by Chris Broussard. Welcome, Chris. Great to be here. Hey, Chris. Are you surprised Curry said this? No, I mean, and I think it's being misconstrued as it's his pick, mm -hmm. where it sounds like he's just saying, I think he's going to win. I think he, I guess he, you could look at it as his pick, but I think he's saying that's who I think will win because of the winning. And I, it makes sense to me. I mean, Harden, there's a great case for him. I've yeah. been riding with him 
the entire season up until recently when it looks like Russell will get this triple-double. And if Russell falls off and averages 9.9 assists, he will not get my vote, and it will most likely go to James Harden. Um, secondly, Steph has benefited himself from the winning matters yes, argument. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Remember his first MVP, he only he averaged less than 24 points, yep. less than eight assists, shot 48% from the floor. Not eye-popping numbers, but they won 67 games, the most in the league, and he ended up getting the MVP award. And Houston has beaten them once. They split with Houston in two games this year. They've obviously swept Russell Westbrook and dominated Oklahoma City in three times. Uh, so it makes sense to me. Um, I think there's some – you might have some arguments that I, I think I can I just count. Might. I think I can counter. Um, but I'll let you make your arguments before well, I – I'll let Shannon counter. pile on before I'm I I'm not going to pile on. <laughs> no, I'm not surprised you made it. And I think people need to get out of this way of thinking. Millennials and, and old heads always go back. Michael Jordan would have never said Charles Barkley or Carl Malone should have been MVP. Magic would have never said Bird would have been MVP. But guys are comfortable now. Yeah. Guys don't feel that they're giving up their competitive advantage by saying someone has had such a great season, they're warranted by winning the MVP. Uh, I think it takes a lot because remember Steph's first MVP, the Players Association, uh, say, uh, Association voted James exactly. Harden the MVP. Exactly. James Harden said, I deserve to be the MVP. So he could look at that, oh, you throwing shade. You, mm -hmm. you trying to salt me up of here. You take that player's award, but this one is the only one that's going to matter. And for him to put that aside and say, you know what, I think what, what he's doing and the team success he's having, I think James Harden uh, deserves it. But if you look, don't look now, Russell has creeped up into that sixth spot. Yeah. Now, there's an outside chance they could catch the Clippers. If they get the five seed, there's no way anybody other than Russell Westbrook, if he has that triple-double, Will win the MVP. So you would you would go and yeah if he gets the really? seed I, I would so it's another one more thing for the old five and you're going to give him the MVP. I, I thought you, it was, you, that's you they're what two games you got him like fourth now yeah. right. But, but here's the thing though, Skip. I said at best case scenario, I thought they'd be seventh or eighth. I mean to get all the way up to the fifth seed. Uh, I mean to get the fifth seed over uh, the Clippers. What if they win like 48 games, 49 games, and get six? Nope. You still wouldn't. Nope. One thing for the old heads, remember Larry Bird said Michael Jordan was God described, it, dis disguised as Michael Jordan. Jordan. So mm -hmm. they gave some props, too, back in the day. No, that was early Jordan, right? It was yeah. early after he scored 63. After, that 63 and, and after they eliminated, yeah. they did no, they hadn't eliminated him yet, mm -hmm. right? They had no. one more playoff was, yeah, game. I think yeah, they was. had one more game. I can't believe the disrespect that continues to be paid to an all-time great athletic achievement that Russell Westbrook continues to pull off, even by Steph Curry. I was surprised he would even go there yet. We still have, to me, a long way to go to the finish line of this regular season. A whole lot's going to happen. love lost between these two nights. I got it. And, and that may be <laughs> what, what is operating below the surface on that one because KD obviously left Russell, yeah, and so yeah. he's heard all the stories about Russell from KD. Why did you leave? And I'm sure KD has spilled his guts to Steph about how hard it was to play with Russell and to live in a franchise that made Russell the man of the franchise. I get that. But, Skip, you remember now when they asked Russell you know? about Steph's defense. Yeah. We're after Russell had been hitting him up for 38 and 40, yeah. and they're talking about Steph Curry and he doesn't yeah. and he, So, when but see, that? I thought that, that was in the playoffs, playoffs. Yeah, in the playoffs yeah, last was. year. That's a good, that's good memory. That's but the true. thing wow. was, I, I agree. I think you could look at that and say, oh, Steph's being petty. That's yeah. why. Mm -hmm. But to your point, he could feel the same way about Harden. You're right. Because Harden definitely was like, look, I should have been MVP, and the players gave it right. to him. So that's why I think he's just giving an honest being, opinion. Being honest, you yeah. think it's not. It shows a lack of competitiveness or No, just respect. Anything. And I've told Shannon, as, as a Hall of Famer, I think you should pay a little more respect to just the athletic achievement to average in this day and age a triple-double. And, and again, you can compare team to team, but I, I watch Houston all the time. They're really good. They are loaded they're, with shooters. They're playing pretty they're good. They're loaded with shooters. Now, they're only 6-4 and four in their last 10 games, so they've had their struggles because some nights James Harden goes 1-8 for eight or 0-10-3. Oh, yeah. And they lost to right. Utah. Like, how did you okay. lose to Utah? They, they did, but when I look down at all the snipers he's got to – kick it to. Trevor Ariza, Ryan Anderson, now they add Lou Williams, Eric Gordon comes off the bench and just lights people up, such as my Spurs. Patrick Beverly can make threes like crazy. He yeah. makes big, he's a clutch mm -hmm. three-point shooter. 
Sam Decker can make his share. And then inside, they got Capella and Nene. It's just, it's just a better team than Oklahoma City. So Oklahoma City, they lose Cantor, and they start losing games because he's their second-best scoring option. Yep. Then they lose Oladipo for four games with a back issue, and they, lose, they go on a losing jag because mm-hmm. he's their third-best scoring option. It's all they got. And, and what he keeps doing, he has beaten the four seed is the Utah Jazz. Mm-hmm. Russell has pretty well, much twice. solo beaten him yeah. three times. Three times yes. The last three times, he's mm-hmm. beaten the four seed. Yep. you got to give him that. Mm-hmm. And, and look, they, Oklahoma City, Russell pretty much solo. He beat the Celtics twice. He, he beat Memphis twice. He, he beat the Clippers twice. I mean, that... And they've beaten the, all the top teams in the league. Yeah. San okay. Antonio, except Golden State. Except San Antonio, State. Houston, have. and Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay. So... All right. So... I, I don't know what's not to like about that, especially to your point. If, if you do end up averaging a triple-double, which I believe he will, the energy required, the stamina, the psychological and physical energy to do it game after in, in an era of resting players right and left, what did, uh, does he need to rest? What no. did a uh, uh, big old shoot? Field goal percentage. Do you know what he shot? And if when he averaged a triple double, I don't know that. I don't know. I just know they had about twenty possessions. <laughs> Forty two. Forty-two, 42 more, more. When you factor oh, in, he played better. ten more minutes a game. Than really? Russ. Forty-two more. Possessions yeah, forty-two a possessions game. more per game. Well, I'd say that worked. I, honestly, I mean, ten assists back then. Not to discount it, but it's probably equivalent to seven. Like Russell's numbers, if you if you put him for that pace that Oscar played at and the minutes he played. He would average 49 points, 17 rebounds, 16 assists. That's what he's doing. So I'm with you. Now, Big let me ask you, if he averages 9.9 assists, do you still it give it to him? It would lose a little luster. I, I would agree with you. It's, you it wouldn't it's vote magic. for it. I mean, it's magic. You, you can't. It's, <laughs> it's, it's like batting. I think this is the equivalent of batting 400. It is. And if you hit 399, it's Oscar, not the same. Oscar, yeah. Oscar um, field goal percentage was 48%. Russell might be around 42, 41. Yep. That, that's not – back then and now, that's still terrible. Well, Bill Russell was a career 44% shooter. Yeah. Back then it okay. was, it was you know – Look, but what, what blows me but away I, is the, much the, better the rebounds. And, and, again, people argue with that. Well, in this day and age, because you have so many bigs who shoot threes, so it sort of frees up the lane a little bit more. And if Russell just attacks the lane on every shot, you know, you're going to get yeah. your share of loose ball kind of rebounds in the lane, long bounce rebounds. But still, to, to do that. More guards aren't, why aren't more guards? I don't know. 10 rebounds. But, but I don't know. Thing, if it's easy. If you, know? you think about I mean, it, there are a lot of times, like LeBron is not even on the free throw line when somebody is shooting. Russell is up there on the free throw line trying to block out bigs, trying to get rebounds, Skip. But you got to give him some credit for that, too. The energy, give him some credit for that. The energy that it takes to battle six, eight, seven yeah. footers, to grab rebounds. So what if he steals two or three from his own teammates? And you plus, balance at 6'3", the physical resilience to keep doing it night after night because he's taking punishment, man. Oh, yeah. Oof. Now, there was a poll in USA Today, Sam Amick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Poll GM. I saw it. And you saw it. They had Harden mm-hmm. first, Westbrook second. So every and, – and they even said in the story, everybody's looking at the wins. That's, I think, the thing that – and maybe the field goal percentage yeah. – that's getting at people. And again, I've I've come over it because I think a triple double is incredible. Kawhi shouldn't but, be ahead of LeBron. Yeah, he should. Uh, Kawhi was the best third. Two-way guy. Wait, Kawhi's the best two-way player in basketball. So you could be why, two-way. Why wouldn't he be? LeBron is the best player. LeBron's the best player. Play in basketball. Her. Wait, I think play that's a player. You're, you're with leader. that now. Huh? I am with Kawhi's got to no. Kawhi's got to, and he's great. But just like you always say with LeBron. He's got to do it in the postseason. Who, who's the better shooter between Kawhi and I mean, we're LeBron. not basing LeBron, it just on... LeBron yeah, field goal not. percentage. This Who year, has a higher field goal oh, percentage? Please. LeBron, How about outside Le- the lane? But shooter. higher field goal percentage, and you've said it, LeBron shoots a lot of threes now. Mm. He's got the higher percentage. Yeah. Yeah. Higher. And LeBron gets no. it done in the postseason. Yeah. Get that done. Kawhi yeah. hadn't even... Get yeah. to the finals first. LeBron, That's why we start calling done. you better than like LeBron. Chris's hype hey. man. Get it done. You know what? Get it done. Get to the finals. Kawhi will get her done against LeBron. If he gets to the finals, Every time. And they beat LeBron. Yeah. Three. And he outplays them head up. Yeah. Three. That's a big if. Three, three, then he can wait, three assists game. Help me out. Who outplayed whom in that game at Cleveland on that National regular TV? season game? Yeah. Who cares? No big yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah. No big yeah. deal. Yeah. Let's yeah. sweep that you under know the they you go, okay. He's averaging three assists a hey. game. He's better three. than LeBron. Hey. Oh, three. Six on. rebounds. And yeah, he's but he better does than LeBron. so much more than LeBron because he actually plays really? defense. LeBron quit playing defense. I don't know what nah, happened. He hadn't quit. Oh, he I remember a block shot. Wasn't there recently a block shot? Oh, you mean Kawhi on Harden? Yes. No mercy. 
Welcome back. We're joined now by FS1 college football analyst Joel Klatt. Welcome, Joel. Good to Good be morning. here. Thanks for coming well, back, you, bro. You bet. You might not say that. You got a smirk <laughs> on it. I got, uh, I got a suspicion that Skip's got a problem with my list. Suspicion, yeah. huh? I'm, I'm I just sure. got Whatever a problem gave with you that Joel. Idea. Just in general. <laughs> Yesterday on FoxSports.com, you unveiled your top 50 NFL draft prospects. Let's take a look at some of the big names on your list. You have Texas A&M defensive end Miles Garrett at number one. Christian McCaffrey, seventh, Leonard Fournette, ninth, and your top quarterback is Deshaun Kaiser at 15, two spots ahead of Deshaun Watson. So, Skip, you've studied Joel's list. I have. Do you have any problems with it? I have major, <laughs> multiple problems with this list, but I'll just boil it down major, to Major, yes. major. Yes, okay. The, my, my two are major. Okay. Look, I know you're not alone in ranking Miles Garrett at the top of your list. Okay. I don't get it because I did not see it. I just watch television. I don't have coaches' tapes, but I always tell Shannon, I watch closely, and I've watched him for three years, and I've read about him for three years, but I haven't seen him for three years because he rarely, what I call, flashed for me. Did he ever jump off my screen? Did I ever sit back and say, he's just unblockable on the college level, which should translate at the pro level? Did not happen. So then I look at the numbers, and I look at 2014. His biggest sack game, three and a half, came against Louisiana Monroe, as they say there. 2015, his biggest sack game was three and a half against Nevada. Mm, I don't think I'm going to take that one to my bank. 2016 last year, his biggest sack game, four and a half, came against the dominating University of Texas at San Antonio. Thank you very much. Uh, no thank you. So in 23 SEC games, Miles Garrett registered a grand total of 12 sacks. That's about, you know, about a half sack a game. That is not good enough to be the first pick in the draft. So I'm not buying what the Combine was selling because sure. the Combine screams freak. I, I, I argue with nothing at the Combine because it's just spectacular what he did at the Combine. The numbers he put up are revolutionary for his size. Yes. Okay, I got all that. But if you have Deshaun Watson ranked as your second best quarterback all the way down at 17th on your list, that is flat out just as wrong because Deshaun Watson will do nothing but win games in the National Football League. And just by virtue of the position he plays, he should be first on your board, and he should be ahead of the Notre Dame kid who just didn't win enough games. I get if your measurables on the Notre Dame kid are way sure. beyond Deshaun sure. Watson's. But when I, do I have to say it again? All, all I heard now for, for six months was about St. Nick's defense. <laughs> right. And it was certainly, over the last two years, one of the best units in the history of college football with one of the best coaches, as you tell me, and you tell me, the, the history of college, the, the best. Okay, let's, I'll give you the best coach. So all he did in those two games was throw seven touchdown passes to a mere one interception. And in the first, these are national championship games, so the marbles are all on the table, and the world is watching. And you throw for 405 the first game with four touchdowns and 420 in the win with three touchdowns, including the game winner at the buzzer and you rush for 73 the first time and 43 the second time, and you get the you-know-what knocked out of you in both games, and you just keep jumping right back up and completing another pass, I'm sorry you can play at the next level. You can win games at the next level. You look a little willowy to me, but it doesn't seem to translate on the football field because you're able to absorb the punishment. So I'm sorry, if I'm the Cleveland Browns, I'm taking him. If I'm San Francisco with the second overall pick and Cleveland makes another mistake, I'm taking Deshaun Watson. And you can have Miles Garrett because you just might always be saying, gee, I wish he could be a little bit more productive. I mean, I, that was a lot to unpack, so we're going to get to all of it, all right? Let's get to all of it. First of all, I feel really bad for you because you clearly make terrible real estate decisions. You might be wondering to yourself, what in the world are you talking about? I thought we were talking about the draft. But you're the type of buyer that every agent and seller loves to keep, see coming down the street. Because hmm. Skip walks in and he wants to see everything that's right about the house. And he doesn't want to see any of the blemishes with the house. So he's going to walk in and say, oh, I love it. This is fantastic. It's, what about the street corner? What about the foundation crack? What about... The roof that's leaking. No, no, no. Whoa, don't whoa, don't whoa, worry whoa, about wait, that. Time out, time don't out. worry about we, that. We've looked at 80 houses here, and I still haven't bought but one in six wait. months. <laughs> and I probably won't. The no NFL draft and, and the evaluation of these players is exactly like real estate. You have to go in seeking out the issues. 
You've got to go in there seeking out the issues or else you're going to make bad decisions. Now, yeah, they're trying to find a reason why not to take you. That's right. That's, that's what you're trying to find. You're not trying to find the reason to take a player. You're trying to find the reason not to take a player. So let's go to the quarterbacks first, and then we'll get to Miles Garrett a little bit later. In the quarterback decision of this year, I believe it's two guys, Kaiser and Watson, okay? The measurables are clearly in Kaiser's favor, and both guys have huge issues. Huge, okay? Not just little, huge inconsistencies across the board as, as it relates to how they play from a game-in and game-out basis. Watson had five games this last year. You want to bring up all these stats from Miles Garrett. Well, Deshaun Watson had five games where he had multiple interceptions. You see, Clemson won in spite of their quarterback at times this year. That doesn't happen in the NFL, and the reason is the margin between your talent and your competition's talent is not as great as the college level. So his team's not going to be able to overcome his inconsistent play mm -hmm. at the NFL like they were able to do in the Especially college level. Especially on the teams he's going to be playing with. He's That's not right. going to be playing on an ultra-talented team. No question about it. He's not going to the Cowboys in the fourth round like or third or fourth round like yeah. Dak Prescott did. Right. Okay. Um, when you look at his career... And this is, again, I'm going in trying to find the issues because this is what I don't like about this process. It sounds like I'm trying to take apart his game. He's a wonderful player, a great leader. He's played his best when his best was needed. All of those things are true. But remember now, I'm buying a house, okay? So I got to find out all the issues. Every year, his numbers have gone down as far as yards per attempt, interception percentage, his quarterback rating. So he's gotten a little bit worse as time has gone on. As Chad Morris, his offensive coordinator, moved from Clemson to SMU, mm -hmm. his numbers got a little bit worse. Kaiser got a little bit better his entire career. So you're seeing a trend in an opposite direction for these two players. Kaiser only had one game with multiple interceptions, and his completion percentage, which was low on the stat sheet, is low because of the style of system that he was in completion percentage is the is is the most inaccurate number that you can look at as far as quality quarterback play because it's completely dependent on the system that you're playing if I want to go out there and complete 25 screen passes I can go 25 of 29 and have a great completion percentage that's not what Kaiser was asked to do at Notre Dame with Brian Kelly throwing the ball down the field so let's come back to the real estate analogy if I don't have a move-in ready house I, I'm searching for it my wife wanted one. We, we don't want to do any work, Skip. Okay, We don't want a renovation, but we can't find it. So guess what? I've got to find a fixer-upper. Okay. Well, as soon as I'm going into the fixer-upper market, I've got to look at potential. So you go into what's the ceiling going to be? What is going to be ultimately what this kid can reach? And Kaiser far outpaces Watson as far as ceiling and potential. So that's why I have Deshaun Kaiser rated two spots ahead of a great leader, great talent, mm -hmm. ultra winner, competitive Deshaun Watson. I hope he succeeds. I have questions about both guys. And then to Miles Garrett, since you unpacked them all, I'm going to unpack, unpack them all as well. Miles Garrett, he's got a rare ability to play above the X's and O's, which in college doesn't always translate to productivity. Because the one thing you're missing about productivity when it comes to sack numbers is they don't translate in college to your individual ability. The schematics of college defenses and the time that's allotted for them to practice and ultimately scheme for the opponent, and Shannon, you'll know this as well, they're not as malleable and they're not as, uh, uh, I would say, versatile, elastic as NFL defenses. So you can scheme against a pass rusher in the college game and he's not going to get the numbers that he would in the NFL game because in the NFL game, what is it about? matchups and when you get that matchup and you've got the elasticity of your defense schematically you can put them in different places and then his ability will translate more in the nfl than it has on the college level therefore that ability that we saw at the combine the above the x's and o's ability that he has is going to be rare and i think ultimately very productive in the nfl level you want to refute? No, go ahead. <laughs> you sure? No, you haven't been able to speak. For that was a lot. Long. No, no, we, that was we took a lot of time. Not Shannon. spoken on. No, I'm, I'm good, Skip, because okay. you know where I stand on this. Um, when I look at Miles Garrett, I'm thinking I should see Indomitian Sue. Well, you can attest to this. When you saw Indomitian Sue play, you say that guy's going to be special. Yeah, dominant player. When you see a Warren Sapp in college, you saw a Bruce Smith or a Reggie White. You're like, those guys are the real deal. At six four and a half, two seventy two. A guy that can run as fast as he can is explosive for a man to be over 270 pounds, to be, have a 41-inch vertical. He's explosive. To run as fast, he did 33 reps with 225. So I'm projecting his, his probably flat bench press is around 470 sure. pounds. Mm -hmm. I agree. Skip. Yep. 
his nickname, Joel, should be Graveyard because when he leave the field, there should be bodies everywhere. And I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Now, you might be... He reminds you a lot of a guy, uh, with, uh, Mario Williams. Mm -hmm. Mario was 6'6", 290, blew everybody away, 40-inch vertical. And he, I mean, he got 91 and a half sacks, so is he more Mario Williams or is he more Bruce Smith? Mm. I would say more Mario Williams. But or someone, is he someone's got to be Mike more. Mamula, right? <laughs> do, do, well, well, as long as he's not Steve Entman or Big Daddy Dan yeah. Wilkinson, okay. I think everybody will be fine. Now, my guy that I like is Christian McCaffrey. Because he checks all I'm with you. I he agree. checks now, every as, as your top overall player. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. You just okay. I, I like where you have him. I, I think yeah. that's a at seven. Solid. I've got a McCaffrey at seven overall, two spots ahead of Leonard Fournette. Because he because the combine is supposed is supposed to offer confirmation to what you saw on tape. Yeah. He looks fast. He ran four four eight. He looks explosive. 37 half inch vertical. He looks quick. Short shuttle six five seven. Yeah. Which is I mean insanely it's, quick. It's, it's like, insane. He, he will do, do more damage on the pro level than Leonard Fournette will be able to. I, I agree. Skip, he checks every box except mm -hmm. that one when they ask your race. He can't check that one. Because if he, with his body of work, went anywhere else, what are we saying? We haven't had a white quarterback, a white running back mm -hmm. taken in the first round. Said, touchdown Tommy Vardell uh, in Bardell. 1992. <laughs> mm -hmm. Leonard Fournette is a guy that runs the contact. I don't know how successful he can be for an extended period of time. Skip, look here. He was running over people in SEC. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Go watch, go watch the documentary of Earl Campbell. Mm -hmm. I that running over people. Yep. And see what that gets you. Mm. And Earl had more quickness as a rookie in his second year in the NFL yes. than Leonard has. And, and, Leonard and, takes a second to get going. And remember now, we, we've got to project to today's NFL. Yeah. Okay, so today's NFL is more about versatility yeah. at the skill position. Yeah. If you're not a dominant wide receiver that's 6'4", like a Julio Jones, if you're not a Gronkowski, you've got to have some versatility to you. Yeah. Be able to play in the slot. Be able to play yeah. in between the tackles mm -hmm. as a running back outside. McCaffrey can do all you that. Could, yeah, you could do more. a hey, bit more one-dimensional. Could, could Tommy Vardell run a go route? No, he could not. <laughs> yeah. and, and listen, not only can this kid fly down the football field, but he has his dad's hands yeah, to me. Quick. That's he, what's he, so he's crazy. Quick in, in a you look at him, and it, it's funny because when you hear people like, when somebody don't doesn't run as fast as they expect him to, well, he's more quick than fast. Right. Say, oh, wait, wait. You can't say. I, I wonder how fast he is because he looks fast. He's bold. 448. He looks yep. quick. Woo, he quick. I wonder if he can catch. Da, da, da. Hands. You see, to me, the only box he doesn't check is durability because he did get beat up yeah. last year when they, they did he run between to, the tackles. Yeah. He's not going to take it 20 times no, between that's the tackles not what he like he did at Stanford. And here's another thing about McCaffrey, if you want to go that route, because here's what I love about McCaffrey. If you're evaluating him as a pure running back in this draft, He's as good of a pure running back and runner as we have. Very similar to Le'Veon Bell. Patient, understands scheme. He can run the zone, gap scheme, man scheme, all of those things. In inside, outside. Then, if you take it and separate it out and just evaluate him as a wide receiver. So, don't even look uh, at him carrying the ball. He's probably the fourth or best, pu best pure wide receiver yeah. available in the draft. Not to mention... He's in the top three when it comes to specialists in the draft as a return man. So here he's checking Huge off value. boxes. So that durability, I bring that up because of the durability question, right? Well, if I only have to give it to him as a running back eight to nine, maybe 12 times, mm -hmm. and then he gets six or seven catches, and he gets two or three returns, well, now all of a sudden I'm up to 20 touches, and now you're affecting the game without having to go through the tackles. I believe he can be just as effective as James White. And it, every player needs to play. There are very few players that are so transcendent that they can go to any system and make it great. The more you go to a system that's conducive to what you do, because quarterbacks, Tom Brady, once he went to New England, he was mm -hmm. the starter, they started building their offense catering more to what he did well. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Aaron Rodgers. This is not the same system that Brett Favre had. Yep. But you cater the system to what the guy does really, really well. He needs to go to a system where they're not going to try to run, hand him the ball 25 times like they do Ezekiel Elliott. Mm -hmm. That's not what he is. But if you give him 10 to 15 carries a game, 
throw it to him five to six times a game and let him bring a kickoff or two back. Hey, a lot of max. a lot of mocks have him going to Green Bay. I would not want to see that because I think he would really he would help do well. Aaron Rodgers. He would do really well. Think about this real quick. Denver. The comparison is not Reggie Bush for Christian McCaffrey. The comparison, and I hate to do this to a young player, but it's apt. It's apt. Think Marshall Falk with Andy and Tomlinson. That's the wow. type of player you're getting. You're not getting a Reggie Bush if you take Christian McCaffrey. No pressure there at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, Skip, you guys found some commonality. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey. I, I, I like my man. <laughs> Most I mean, I wish I was a real estate agent with Skip coming down. He wants to see all the He's positives. seen every house in L.A. He hasn't fixed one yet. No mercy. Reports out of Dallas have gone back and forth on Tony Romo's future, saying the quarterback would be released, then traded, then back to release. Dallas has already lost offensive lineman Doug Free and Ronald Leary and defensive back Barry Church this offseason. We're joined by Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. Greg, I apologize for my voice. It chose to leave me a few days ago. Welcome. Have the Cowboys taken a step back this offseason? I believe they have. I truly believe they've taken a step back. And one of the reasons why is because of the man who's in charge, Jerry Jones. Um, I believe he's holding on too, too long to this Romo deal. He needs to cut ties or do whatever is best for Romo and, and let the team move on. Obviously, they lost key members of their offensive line and Doug Free and Ronald Leary, but I think the Barry Church hurts them as well because their defense wasn't what we all know that their defense needs to be. Right. And didn't they lose my, uh, uh, the other Wilcox? Didn't they lose him? They did. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think it's done yet, but they're going to. They're going yeah. to, for sure. Mm-hmm. But the thing, that, the thing that I look at this as a player, mm-hmm. yeah. as a player, <laughs> I remember in Green Bay, Brett Favre retiring. Mm-hmm. Which then, time? The first time, the, the second f- time, the third time, or the fifth? The first time. Okay. Then he come, He wanted to come back. We, we ended the season losing in the NFC Championship game. We were 13-3 and that year that he played, and then he decided to retire. Then he wanted to come back. Offseason was in limbo. We had a really good nucleus, but we lost a really good quarterback, but was inheriting a really good quarterback. Right. We ended up going 6-10 and that year, and I truly believe a lot of it had to do with everything that was kind of looming over the offseason. I see Dallas going through the same thing. They've had a great season this past year, but they're allowing their offseason to become headlines now. And that's going to become a distraction. I don't care how good you are. We haven't heard one thing about the head coach, Jason Garrett, making any decisions because he has no he has authority. no power. He has no authority. He has no place of, to make any decisions and say, look, guys, we're moving forward. And I believe this is what's going to really hurt this team. It, when you see a Philadelphia Eagles making moves to get better, Redskins, they're kind of in the same situation as the Cowboys. But, yeah, I, I definitely believe that they've taken a step back. So are you predicting 6-10 and 10 for my Cowboys? I'm not predicting 6-10 and 10 mm. because I, they're definitely good enough to, to still make the playoffs. But their division is not easy. It's not an easy role. When you see a Brandon Marshall go over to the New York Jet, uh, Giants. Giants and you lost to that team twice. Mm. Without him. With, and, and, and they do have a great defense. Mm. It, it's, it's going to be an uphill do, climb. Do you love what the Redskins have been doing? I don't love what the Thank Redskins have been doing. Do you really love what the Eagles have been doing? I, like, I don't. I like what the Eagles have mm. done. When I look at when I look at the Eagles, I like what they've done versus what the Cowboys look like right now because of Jerry Jones and this Tony Romo fiasco. For me, I'm a firm believer. Either you're getting better or you're getting worse. You don't stay the same. Let's just take the team. Before I go to the Cowboys, let's take the teams that finished ahead of the Cowboys. The Packers, they, lose, they lost two offensive linemen. They lost Michael Hyde. Latroy Guyon reportedly will be suspended the first four games. They took a step back. Mm-hmm. The Atlanta Falcons, they lose one of the most important things. Their offensive coordinator, Kyle Shanahan, is now in San Francisco and a big key third down conversion guy, Robinson, the receiver, he went with him. They took a step back. You mentioned Washington. Okay, you get Terrell Pryor, but you lose uh, Pierre Garçon and, yeah. and DJ <laughs> Jackson, and you lose Baker, one of your best defensive linemen. Absolutely. You took a step back. The Giants, look, I know Victor Cruz is, is, is a big deal in New York, but Brandon Marshall is an upgrade over Victor Cruz. Mm-hmm. So the Giants got better. You know Eli, lick him, Eli. He always does it to y'all. Mm. 
your team, yeah. your cowboy that you've been rooting for since 1960. Mm -hmm. Now, the Eagles. Now, Alshon Jeffries, I, I, I'm glad. Look, he signed a one-year deal. And what we see with these one-year deals, uh, uh, Greg, is approve it. Because he's saying, I deserve Antonio Brown. I deserve Julio, Dez, Demarius. I deserve that type of money. Mm -hmm. They're like, nah, you had that one good year, you've been nicked, and you didn't play particularly well last year. We're going to sign you to a one-year prove-it deal. And we see a lot of these going around with receivers. So I'm not, you know, maybe they got marginally better, but now we look at the Cowboys, Skip. Okay, they lose Larry. Okay, you lose Larry, really no big deal because you get Lionel Collins, Lionel Collins back. Lyle. He, Lyle. Yep. And he, he's a, he looks to be special. But defensively, Skip, this is where you need the help. You didn't add anybody. Now, let's just say free agency-wise, they're losing. Now, they might go in the draft and get a, a sure-five, bona fide D lineman in the corner. Well, that's okay because you've lost your two safeties, your corners, church, um, not church, uh, uh, Claiborne and Carr. They're probably not going to come back. Mm -hmm. You lost two of your D linemen, so, Skip, how do you think you've proved? And plus the uncertainty, the unknown, what will the NFL do with one Ezekiel Elliott? Yes. That changes the dynamic, Skip. Mm -hmm. So they haven't got – either you get better or you get worse. You do not stay the same. Mm. I believe the Cowboys have gotten worse at this point. Mm. Your Cowboy hate is showing. Skip! You're, you're just <laughs> – it's all over you. You're just spilling it out. It's like oozing through your pores, Cowboy hate. You're in your glory today. And what is today? I don't even know what day it is. Tuesday. March something. March 14th. 14th. So on March the 14th, you were declaring the Cowboys defunct, basically. You're nope. saying they're, they're done. They're dead in the water. Am I, I right? I, the question was, have the Cowboys taken, taken a, a step, step back? back. Mm -hmm. Yes. I yes. didn't say they were dead. Uh, I didn't say they were I think you're heading there. I'm saying the Giants yeah. going to win the division, but that's all I oh, said. Oh, you oh. said that. Said Whoops, that, that slipped out. I said that out loud? Yeah. They, they may be heading there. Yeah. They, who, Giants? No. Cowboys? Cowboys. Toward dead? Toward they, they may be heading there. Really? LeVar Frank Ball Jennings says it too? LeVar Ball rubbing off on me, Skip. They, they may be heading <laughs> there. Got me speaking out loud. They, oh. Really? So are you willing to go there? Well, you said they're not going to go. No, you go ahead and make your point. Well, go ahead. Go great, great, great. Eight and eight? I, don't... I need something on the record here so I can if... remind you of it next year about 17. A dollars. side or B side? About... Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm looking at... About a nine and seven, ten and six year, and I don't think that cuts it. Nine and seven will not cut it. It will not win the East next year, especially when the other two teams mm -hmm. are going to be gimme games for the two better teams. Well, I, well, now, I, well, Skip, this is what's going to happen. Now, if you know if they start out slow, and number nine is on the roster, <laughs> that's a problem. Okay, I'm going to give you this. <laughs> Zeke is making me extremely <laughs> uncomfortable right now. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. And I told you in our discussion to open the show, I will not be surprised if he gets suspended. And if he does, that's going to be a big problem. Uh -huh. If he's gone for the first X games, whatever it is, four games, let's say. <sighs> Romo is increasingly concerning to me because I've been on record with this all along. Jerry just can't let go of this. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to disrupt and distract the incumbent starter who happens to be a rookie going on sophomore Absolutely. and it's just not fair to him. And Jerry's digging in and I, I predicted this. I saw this coming. And the worst thing Romo did was have his people leak that he was going to be released whatever day it was going back five, six days ago. And then Tony himself went on Instagram and said, goodbye, Cowboy Nation. And thank you very much. You do not do that to Jerry Jones because he was not ready to pull that plug just yet. And he does want to get something back for Tony Romo. And then if he keeps him long enough, he might start thinking, you know, maybe I want Tony to be my quarterback. If everybody else thinks they can win a Super Bowl with him, why can't I? That would be a problem. And I told you I'm out if that occurs. I, I might be out if Tony goes through the preseason. Like, the, it, it's just mm -hmm. not fair to Dak Prescott. But now I'm going to... Uh, remind you what our friend Chris Carter said. He's the smarter of our two Hall of Famers on this show. And, <laughs> and what did he say last week? I loved it. He just summed it up by saying, as is, Dallas is an 11 or 12 win team. Just if they do nothing, 11 or 12 wins. Now, again, if you lose Zeke, that's a whole nother. But it, it, as they are right now, if this is the way they start next year, they're going to win 11 or 12 games. And I agree with that because I'm going to remind you, that defense, thanks to Rod Marinelli, who should have been the coordinator of the year, 
He gets them to overachieve. He, he can motivate the way no man I've ever seen motivate on defense can motivate. Mm-hmm. And to play his scheme his way in a good way where they all buy completely in. They were the fifth-ranked defense in the NFL last year, and I don't know how they did it because there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going on with those guys. Do I like Barry Church? I liked him, but I don't love him. I don't think he's a difference maker. I don't think, you know, he's not a pro you sure, bowler. You sure were singing his praise. Well, just oh, he went Kirk to church. Cousins. He went to church. went to church, you know. Yeah, Kirk Cousins that, went to yeah, church. Exactly. I, I but you still got to replace huh? him. Okay, so you do. I don't know if you know who Jeff Heath is, but against Green Bay, he was really good. Should have had two picks on, on Aaron Rodgers. Yes. He did have one. one oh he my had gosh, one. The, and the second fact, one was the second that one. didn't count was yeah. impressive. Hey, that it fact, was impressive. That fact. Jeff that. Heath can play, and he's been around for a while, and he's just sort of coming into his own. And they have added three. This is how they did it. They built the defense this way, so I'm who am I to, to, to knock? But that Stephen Paya, he's he's pretty good. If you look at it, and yeah. nobody knows who he is. Demontre Moore, I know who he is from Texas A&M, and I know he's been hit and miss, mostly miss. But watch, they'll plug him in, and they'll get some plays out of him. We saw David Irving start to come into his own. He disappeared against Green Bay, but I still like the path that he was on. Mm-hmm. And then that Nolan Carroll, I've never loved him, but is you, you, you did nothing but blast used car all year. So is Nolan Carroll as good as Brandon Carr? Yeah, you'd have to say yes. Christmas Carol? Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's joy to the world, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh, you weren't thinking, I, oh, I, oh, did you like him last year when he gave up that touchdown to dance? I, I, Absolutely I did not. not. But, but again, <laughs> has he played, has he been a starter in the National Football League? Can he be as good as Brandon Carr? Yeah. 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 Although I thought Brandon Carr was pretty good last year. So let's look at the offensive okay, line. Watching Gray. Offensive line. So Doug Free suddenly retires. Well, what is he doing? He's just negotiating. He's just, look, and, and he's the weak link on the offensive yeah. line, even though he's the leader of the mm-hmm. offensive line. The, the guy I'm always covering my eyes for is the right tackle because I'm like, oh, no, you know, like the, all the problems start over there. Yes. Because he's kind of an overachiever. He was a fourth-round pick, but he's 33 years of age. Mm-hmm. He's negotiating. So they took a kid in the third round a couple of years ago, Chaz Green, and he's been more missed than hit. But he's pretty good, and he's gotten some reps for Doug Free, and I think he might be better than Doug Free if you give him a little bit of time. Do they not have still three Pro Bowl players in the offensive line? We all so, Pro. Okay, and you know what? And it may be four because Lyle Collins graded out the best two years ago he when, when he came out mm-hmm. of nowhere because Jerry was able to sort of quote-unquote steal him because he had his issues in college. They might bump right. him to right tackle, Skip. Okay, they, they can do that, but they have four studs in the offensive line, right? And yes. that's, that's not going to go away. Is Des Bryant still there? Yeah, I think he is. Did they not sign Terrence Williams, re-sign him? Yeah, and they got him at their price because he took the hometown discount to stay. He's from Dallas, went to Baylor, obviously. Greg, hey, I, 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 I do. I, let's not talk about Terrence Williams. Why? Oh, wait, wait a second. Oh, here we go. Let's not. Let's not do that. Really? That's not making your point. Oh, you got that's, issues with Terrence Williams? No, nah, he ain't got no issues. Yes, with he back. does. Nah, he I think no we issues. just learned something here. You know what? I don't have any issues with Terrence Williams because every once in a while he gets behind people. Every once in a okay. while. When well, you look at a when you look at a player and you're looking at a team that needs to make plays, you can't that that's my issue with Dez at time. Every once in a while, he is probably the best receiver in the game. Okay. But every once in a while doesn't cut it. We need it every week. Terrence Williams is not. Okay, give I'm not me that. saying he's Greg Jennings, but he's a pretty good two. He he's a he's no. A, he, yes. He's, four, you see, four, three. I, I thought you were about to say a two three. But you said two. I had to okay. shut my mouth. So are we saying Cole Beasley is the two then? I'll take hey. Cole Beasley. Listen, Cole Beasley is he's more, he's he's more consistent. As, as Troy Aikman said it, he's it, more it, consistent he said, for sure. Cole Beasley is basically unguardable in the middle of the field. He's just too quick for people, yeah. right? I'll give him that for okay. sure. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So, I like Cole. All right. So I, I think they won 13 games last year with that group of receivers. And are they not all back? Skip. skip Wait, skip. Jason Witten is back, and he can't outrun Shannon, but but he's still Ain't pretty good. Ain't nothing wrong uh, with that. A lot of people uh, can't outrun Shannon. Uh, but I'm not here uh, that. <laughs> skip. You don't get to pick right up where you left off. Oh. You have to start all over again. Mm. Thir- those 13 wins last year will have no bearing on what their record will be mm. this year. So and, oh, you know what? And, and again, I hear mixed reports about Jalen Smith, but remember they took him in the second round last year. And if he ever gets remotely healthy, he was a terror at Notre Dame as an outside. Yeah, back. he was special. He fly. And let's just see what happens. He got his knee just absolutely annihilated. Mm-hmm. And he's having a hard time getting regeneration. Yeah, and he had yeah, nerve, nerve damage. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I'm looking. What I'm looking forward to seeing is how 
Dak Prescott responds amongst all of this that's looming. Because when I, again, I refer back to when I was in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers took it like a pro. He was the pro's pro dealing with all of the situations mm -hmm. with Brett. Dak Prescott, we haven't heard one peep out of him. Being negative, he's always spoken highly of Tony Romo. He's always spoken highly of the organization. But there will come a time where that microphone and that camera will be in his face while he's having to perform, and I don't know if he's going to be. And I'm a fan. I just don't know if he'll have enough with what they have. And that man, Jerry Jones, scares me every time. Okay, he scares me too. But I think that Dak Prescott will rise above Jerry Jones. For the first time in a long time, there's one transcendent player in that locker room, and it's that guy. He changed the way they played football last year. He made them believe they can win this game instead of figure out a way to blow this game with Romo. So to me, going forward, I think Jerry has been won over by Dak Prescott, and I think Jerry will take a backseat to Dak Prescott. No mercy. This is the Skip and Shannon Undisputed Podcast, where we're delivering you an unscripted, unfiltered, undisputed version of the biggest topics of the day show. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, like us on Facebook at Undisputed on FS1, follow on Twitter at Undisputed, and catch us at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific, Monday through Friday on FS1. You can find us on Channel 219, on DirecTV, 150 on Dish. Thanks for listening, everyone. Again, I apologize about my voice. I'm your host, Joy Taylor. It's good to be back in studio. That's where we leave all the debates for today. Get your popcorn ready. Terrell Owens will be here tomorrow. You will not want to miss it. We'll talk to you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.